Hello, in this video we are going to be talking about representing electric fields. We're going to talk about how we can draw and visualize what's happening with electric fields uh, with both field vectors and field lines. So let's get into it. Okay, first things first, we can define a little bit about what we mean by the direction of a field. We did this uh, a little bit already with gravity. So we talked about gravitational fields. Uh, and the idea was, you know, gravitational field around the surface of the Earth is about 9.8. And we know that's 9.8 down. The reason being, um, the direction is kind of defined as what would happen with a force. So they're a little abstract, but here's our official definitions. Uh, gravitational field lines or field vectors show us which way a force would act if I put a mass at that point. So again, the idea is if I put a little mass somewhere near the surface of the Earth, it would be pulled straight down towards the center of the Earth. Um, so that's really all the direction of the line is representing. It shows, it shows you, hey, if you put something here, I'm going to pull it this way. That's what the direction of the, the field is about. Um, it's a little more complicated uh, for electric charge only because the main difference with electric charge is we have pluses and minuses. A positive and negative charge and there's this whole po uh, opposites attract and like charges repel thing going on so we kind of just had to pick one we had to just pick a convention and go with it so here's the convention we're going with field lines will show us what would happen if you put a positive charge at a point in space so if there's an electric field the direction that electric field shows you hey if you put a plus here i would push it in this certain direction so one thing we'll have to think about is that will mean if I put a negative charge at that point in space, it's going to get pushed in a direction opposite to the field lines. So we'll kind of break that down. All right, but those are the rules that you want to more or less memorize, just the conventions of how we draw these fields. So let's look at a couple examples. Uh, first, we'll do one that we're kind of familiar with. Let's look at gravitational fields and a mass. So I have a mass, a big M here. It's perhaps a planet or something like that, creating a gravitational field, influencing the space around it. And so we can represent what's happening with the field. Say I have two points I care about, point A and point B. These are points in space. These are not masses. There's nothing here. They're just places, you know, locations in space. And I care about what's happening with the field because maybe I want to put a mass there. Maybe I want to put a satellite up here and say, okay, what would happen? Um, all right, so here's what the field lines would look like. Uh, the field vectors, rather. I could draw a vector at point A to represent the gravitational field. So I'll use little g. And I'll say little ga for the gravitational field today. And it points towards the mass because, uh, again, that's what these fields do. They show that if I put a mass at A, it would be attracted to the big M. And so it would get pushed in this direction. Whereas if I go over to point B here, I would draw a field vector like this. Again, points towards the center of uh, mass big M, which we treat as a point mass. But a little shorter because, of course, like all vectors, the length of the vector represents the magnitude of the uh, in this case, field strength. So I know because I'm further away and because the gravitational field obeys an inverse square law that uh, the point further away has a weaker gravitational field. So uh, that's how we can kind of draw these fields. Now let's try them for electric charges. Now there'll be two different types here because of that rule. So let's say I have a negative charge. So any kind of negative charge, remember Q is our symbol for a charge. So this could be something like an electron if we're at a very small scale, or maybe we're looking at just some object that's been negatively charged through friction or something like that. Um, so again, I can look at these two points and say, all right, what's happening with the electric field at A? Because just like a mass creates a gravitational field all around it, a charge creates an electric field all around it. And the rule is the field shows me which way a positive charge would get pushed. But this point in space, A, if I put a positive charge here, well, it would get attracted to the minus. So these are going to look very similar to our G field lines because it's an attractive force here between the minus and these imaginary pluses. Uh, so this is what they look like. Of course, I'm using a big E now for the electric field because this is not a gravitational field. This is showing what would happen if I put a charge at A and B, a positive charge. So the place where this will look a little different is if I have a positive charge. So now let's imagine I have a positively charged object hanging out right here, influencing the space around it with its electric field. And I want to know about the electric field specifically maybe at point A and point B. Well, same idea. If I put a positive charge here at A, I can think about which way the force would be, and it would be that away. 
because a positive charge will be repelled by another positive charge. So here's the quick thing you can remember is that electric field lines will always point away from positive charges and towards negative charges just because of that rule that we decided to define them as. They show me which way a plus would get pushed. All right, so that's really the thing to memorize probably. It's good to know the rule of why that is, but ultimately you're just gonna be practicing drawing electric field lines pointing towards negative charges and away from positives. Okay. We'll also deal a lot, uh, especially with electric fields, with this whole idea of resultant field. We did this a little bit with gravity when we looked at you know what's happening with the gravitational field somewhere in between the Earth and the moon, for example. We can do the same kind of thing when we have charges. And because there's plus and minuses now, we're just going to be careful with all, this, all these direction rules. So here's one where we can practice all these direction rules. Um, this is a real paper one question from the past where I have two point charges and three points in space. All right, so think about what you're looking at there. You got to really break it down. But um, you want to identify what's happening with the direction of the electric field at these points. Point X, point Y, and point Z, right? There's nothing there. Nothing is at X, nothing's at Y, nothing's at Z. They're just places in space. P and Q are charges. They're point charges. So there's a positively charged object and a negatively charged object. So what you want to do is because of P and Q combined, you want to say, okay, what's happening with the electric field at X? What's happening with the electric field at Y? What's happening at the electric field at Z? That's how you want to kind of decode this problem. So you try that. Make a sketch. You must, must sketch these out, draw them out, picture what's happening. So take a moment, pause the video, make a sketch of what's happening at X and at Y and at Z and answer the paper one question. All right. If you said D, you would be correct. Here's how you want to kind of picture this. All right. Making a sketch is really good. So I want to come to point X and say, okay, there's two different nearby charges. There's charge P and charge Q. Both create their own fields. I want to take them one at a time. So I know at X, whoa, P creates a field to the left because there's a field away from P. And Q creates a charge to the right because it's going to point towards it. All right, my pen is not working. Um, oh, boy. All right, so <laughs> you want to make sketches better than this. But um, the idea is at X, there's an electric field from charge P pointing to the left because the electric field points away from a positive charge. And there's also an electric field from Q, the other charge in the problem, and it's going to point to the right because it points towards my negative charge. Now, the thing is that fields from P must be bigger than the field from Q because at this point, I'm way closer to P than I am to Q. So I got one field to the left, one field to the right. The one to the left is bigger, so my total field is going to be to the left. So it's got to be either C or D. Um, I can eliminate these right off the bat. All right, if I'm using my multiple choice skills, I almost don't really have to worry about what's happening at Y because they're the same answer for the two that I've narrowed it down to. But we can think about this to make sure that to the right makes sense. Now here at Y, again, imagine both of your fields sketch two different vectors. I'm going to have the field from P pointing to the right because it points away from the plus, and the field from Q is also pointing to the right because it points towards the minus. So the field points away from the plus, which at this point is to the right, and it points towards the minus, which at this point is also to the right. So for sure, the total field will be to the right. All right, and then at Z, um, I want to picture that there's a field from Q to the left. That's a pretty strong one because I'm close to Q. And again, that field is to the left because it points towards a negative always. And then the field from P points away because it's a positive, but it's much smaller because I'm far away. And so left is going to win. So the answer is D. All right, so that's the idea. Uh, you want to be able to look at each individual point, sketch the individual field vectors that are happening there, and then sum them up. These problems can be a little time consuming, but you want to take the time to make those sketches and break them down bit by bit. You can't do it just by kind of squinting and looking at it. You got you to gotta work some stuff out. Okay. Um, one other kind of thing that you might see with field vectors is combining them when there are angles involved. The good news is the IB typically won't have you do this with math. Um, it'll just be uh, geometrically or graphically. So we'll look at how to do that. One good way to do this is you can do a thing called combining your vectors tip to tail. So tip to tail, what that means is the tip of your vector is the pointy end, the arrowhead end, and the tail is the end that doesn't have an arrow. So we're going to literally sketch our vectors connected kind of front to back. 
And then what you can do is go from the very beginning to the very end, the very first tip to the very, the very first tail to the very last tip. Um, this will make more sense when we look at an example of it in just one second. All right, then once you have that, you could use something like trig to add the vectors together with the right triangle math or laws of cosines if you're feeling bold. But again, almost always the IB doesn't make you do this math. They don't make you do the trig. They'll usually just have you draw and say what is the direction and just figure out the direction. Um, so let's look at an example of that to make some sense of this. Here's the type of thing you might see. Uh, here is a classic situation with multiple charges. And maybe I care about what's happening at some point in space like this. All right, so I have two charges, Q1 and Q2, we'll call them. They're both positive charges. And so I know Q1 creates an electric field all around it, and Q2 also creates an electric field all around it. And what I care about is how do those fields combine at this point right here. All right, so what we want to do is sketch the field from Q1 and sketch the field from Q2 and then see what's going to happen. So let's do that. I want to sketch the field from Q1. I'm at this point here. I know the field is going to point away from a positive charge. It shows me which way another plus would, pu would be pushed if I put it here. It would be like that. So that electric field from Q1 points away from Q1. And I also have an electric field from Q2 pointing away from Q2. So I'm using one and two. That's the field from charge one. That's the field from charge two. So what I want to see is how will these combine to give me one resultant field. Remember, resultant means net. It means add the vectors together. So the way we can add these vectors together is to use this crazy tip to tail method, which means I'm going to sketch, redraw, and imagine that I'm going zoop, 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 moving this vector over like this. There they are now connected tip to tail. So it's the same vector, same length, same direction. I'm just moving it over here because this will show me visually how these are going to combine. If I go from the very first tip to the very last tail, well, there we go. That's my result. So that's the mathematical combination of those two vectors, believe it or not. That's how this math works out. Um, and it would be to the right. All right, so again, you could find the length of this vector with geometry and or trig just by knowing how long this is and how long this is. And, you know, I don't know, drawing a line like this, making two right triangles, something crazy like that. Again, typically the IB is not going to make you do that math of how long is this vector. They'll almost always in a problem like this say, here's two charges, here's a point. What's the direction of the resultant field? Is it, is it up, down, left, or right? You know, something like that. Or they'd probably show you, you know, one, two, three, four. Um, so, you know, you're just figuring out what the direction is with this kind of problem. So this is the, one of the really good ways to do it. Hopefully this makes sense too, if you think about the original two vectors. Um, Essentially what's happening is the vertical components are canceling out because of symmetry here. Vector one is up and to the right. Vector two is down and to the right. Well, the positive y part of E1 and the negative y part of E2 are probably the same size. And so they end up adding to nothing. Whereas the x component of each vector add together. So that's really what's happening. But again, this, um, this vector addition thing is, is a trick you can use anytime you have vectors that you need to add together at angles and it's not just like one to the right and one to the left all right so that's field vectors and the last thing you'll see that we've looked at a little bit already is field lines so the idea with field lines if you remember drawing these for planets a little bit is that we're trying to represent overall what's happening with the field around an object so instead of like looking at individual field vectors like we did here I might just care about, okay, but overall, could I just draw what's happening to all of the space around plus Q? Uh, I probably don't want to draw infinity different little field vectors. So we've come up with a system of doing this, which is draw field lines, which show this overall um, pattern. So if you remember doing them for planets, they looked like this for gravitational field lines. So I said gravitational field lines can point towards, say, the Earth. They show that if I put a mass anywhere near the Earth, it would get attracted to the Earth. And close up, it looks like this. Well, this is what it's going to look like for charges. Uh, let's break down the rules and then draw these. Okay, so again, they're showing the overall pattern of the field around the object. Um, instead of drawing individual vectors, we'll draw continuous lines, long straight lines, and we put arrows on those lines to show which way the field is. So again, instead of drawing individual vectors, um, we draw lines. So the idea is these are these are lines that go you know, infinitely far. And so we just draw little arrowheads on the lines to show, you know, what's the direction of the field. Um, 
So here's what the field lines would look like for positive and negative point charges. Again, the key thing you want to remember is electric field lines will point away from a positive charge and towards a negative charge. So they should look like this. You'll notice some of the other stuff we talked about with field lines is still true here. So as you get further away from the charge, we can see the field lines spread out. Uh, they get less dense, we can say. And so the, remember that represents the field is getting weaker, which we know is true because uh, electric field is also an inverse squared law thing. Um, all right, so get these down. You do want to memorize these field line patterns, the field from a positive point charge and the field from a negative point charge and what they look like. There are plenty more field line patterns that we will get into, especially with HL students. More exciting things like what if I have a positive and a negative nearby each other? How will these combine? So we'll save that fun for another day. All right, so there's what you need right now on field vectors and field lines. We will have more fun with field lines in the near future. And until then, have fun.